This is JJ Solomon. This is Ray Branch out of Mr. Out to the end. Mr. New Boys can touch me on my worst day. This is the Spit Bucket Podcast. It's your boy, Mr. Altimia, Mr. 214, Senor Dos Uno Cuatro, Senor Dos Catorce, Mr. Undeniable, Mr. D Boy Can't Touch Me. <laughs> oh, my worst day. Uh, right here with my partner in crime, my dog, my brother from another. This is the Spit Bug uh, Podcast, episode 44. JJ Solomon, what's popping, my guy? How goes it, sir? Happy, um, happy Thursday to you, bro. How you doing today? Man, happy Earth Day, bro. What, what a beautiful Earth we live on. And, and I would tell everybody to I- enjoy I- every day you're on the grace of this Earth. And I mean that literally every half a second of the day. Live it up to the fullest. Exactly, bro. Love, love your family. Love your friends. Love your close ones. And just live to the fullest, man, because we never, ever know. Yep. Never, ever, ever know, dog. So things been good on your end. Our man been great. Uh, this TSB movement is off the chain. If y'all ain't following us on uh, uh, on Twitter, on, on X, on X, on uh, Instagram, Spotify, you know we're doing re- real, real, real good in them areas. And we know YouTube is uh, another one of our platforms. And we just want to get y'all introduced to the other multiple platforms we be on. So please follow us on Instagram, the Spit Bucket Official. On Twitter, it's the Spit Bucket Official, right, JJ? It's, uh, yeah, just type in the Spit Bucket. It's just type in the Spit Bucket. Yes, sir. And shout out to Al Money for tuning in. Shout out to Al Money. And on Facebook, uh, go there. We got 33,000 strong, the Spit Bucket Podcast group on oh, Facebook. Yeah. You want to talk some shit? You feel like talking shit to unboxing? Jump on the spit bucket on Facebook, and it's all day, every day, into the night, all all the time. So, uh, big salute to everybody tuning in. We just ask that y'all smash that like button, please share, please hit the hit the bell, and all that good stuff that we're supposed to say, just to make sure y'all are following us. We already got <laughs> talking about Spence. Let us get to it. Oh, let us get to it. Uh, Nine one three. Salute, my ninja. What's popping, my guy? What's up, fellas? Uh, so before we get into this, guys, uh, we just want to take a quick second. You know, Corey and I talking about enjoying every minute, like it's your last. This is our first uh our first time on since the weekend. We do want to take a, a second to send our condolences, guys. I'm not sure if y'all are up to speed. Uh, but Saturday night we did see tragedy in Mexico, Tijuana, um, at Sky Nicholson uh against Sabrina La Muñequita Perez. We're fighting for the uh, WBC uh, interim featherweight title, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Tragically, man. uh, Tragically, her husband and coach, Diego Arrua, uh, there towards the end of the fight, just just passed out, had an episode, and and sadly, he passed away there at the hospital shortly after. You know, this guy was cheering. If you watched it on TV, you see him there just doing normal coach stuff, and literally from one second to the next. He's out of there, man. So it's it's life changing, and it, it just another reminder to to just appreciate every second because you could be getting ready for a fight, be getting ready for a party, getting ready for anything, and just like that, time is up. So our condolences to Sabrina, our condolences to the family, everybody involved. I'm sure Sky Nicholson, even though she she won unanimous decision, I'm sure that was a difficult day night for her. So the half of the spit bucket, we're just sending our condolences. Yeah, much condolences, man, to that family. Um, that's a tragic, tragic event, JJ. Um, him there with his wife doing uh, her dream, his dream, what they love. Um, and for it to end like that is just, just a sad, sad situation. So just like you said, us here at the Spit Bucket Podcast, we send our full condolences to all the friends and family members and just the entire boxing world who's mourning over the loss of uh, that coach. Diego, Diego Arrua. Coach Diego Arrua, uh passed away at 58 years old. Rest in peace, sir. 
All right, man, we're going to jump on into this episode. Uh, we've got a lot of the juicy stuff to cover that's going around, flying around. We've got a big fight weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit, a, a kind of a triple header, uh, some things to look out for. Uh, but first, first, we do want to hit some uh, some news that we broke last week about Frank Martin. Um, trouble in paradise is what we said. And basically what we know led to to ultimately Frank pulling out of the fight. You can call it ducking. You can call it him being greedy, whatever you, you want to call it. Fact is, he didn't approve that final amount. Fight didn't happen. All the rumors started. Uh, I want to make it clear, though, that Correy, nor I, or anybody on the spit bucket, you won't find a clip, you won't find a tweet, you won't find a comment where we said Frank Martin left Derek James. We said there was trouble in paradise. We, we did a couple of fact checks the day of. We got the news that morning. We didn't break it to that afternoon because we did our due diligence. And since then, we, we know that our story was true, is true. A lot of folks been hitting us up, Corey, because we've seen uh, Frame Martin posting. You know, they haven't made any public comments, but we've seen Frame Martin posting clips of him working at, at World Class. We know what World Class looks like. Um, what does this mean to you, Corey? Uh, what the the kind of no comments, but then these kind of clips are posting. Obviously, he's back in Dallas with that that clip you can see on with the Cowboys in the background. What does it mean to you, dog? Um, it, it means they're trying to shut the noise down because it it, it was something there. Um, that shows me Frank Martin had to talk with his team. Him and his team, you know, uh, they came to an agreement and an understanding of the situation and how it played out. And, and, and just like, you know, hey, JJ, things happen, right? And, and But it's easily to fix things if you have that conversation, right? right. You know, because this was a bad, bad look on Man Down Promotions, um, just coming out the blue, and, you know. So salute to them for coming to the table like man, shaking it out. And able to solve these differences. Uh, like I say, what's yet in the future to be determined, uh, we'll see. But it's a good sight. No, to, for sure, man, it is. And that tells me, like you said, it's either damage control, uh, like you said, you know, mess cleaning up the noise, um, or they could have mended, you know, they could have mended sides. Not, nobody's come out and denied anything. Nobody's come out and said anything. But we know he's Frank Martin's in Dallas. We know he's training, working. It looks like he's working with Derek. I saw a photo also of what looked like Derek to be wrapping his hands. So salute to them. This was never, uh, you know, we saw a couple channels out there saying it was just clickbait and we're just spreading rumors. No, 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 no. We got rumors. But we got stuff that's got congressing legs. And if we wore one of those channels that wanted just to get the clickbait and the likes, regardless of who we're disrespecting and what we're hearing, that we could do that, but no, we got a lot of integrity. Speaking of, JJ, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you stated that. Um, like you say, if we was one of them channels who wanted to, to clickbait, you know, because in my general Big Fish voice, some, <laughs> some, some new information was presented to us, right, uh, uh, about situations. If we if we were a clickbaiting channel and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, just wanted to get views and clicks, you know the the news that we had about what what was the real story with Earl Spence. It would have been out there, but we did our due diligence, and, and we understood. You know, we didn't have all the the factos on this, and we'll never be one of them brands to just put stuff out for clicks and views. Never that. Facts, bro. Facts. I just want to get that straight. A lot. Of, last week we were uh, we made our. A lot of times, a lot of people saw. Shout out to my boy and Cam. Salute. I seen them say, "What's up, ILTBA?" Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Let me check these comments before we go on. We just definitely wanted to hit on that Frank Martin thing because I seen a couple people say, "Oh, oh, y'all were wrong." No, no, we didn't say Frank Martin was leaving, dog. So y'all pipe down a little bit, tap the brakes. Uh, so let's go, dog. Um, next big topic. The big news is buzzing around all over boxing Twitter or boxing X and Facebook and social media. It's Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence yet again. We're hearing the back and forth. We're seeing, uh, you know, Crawford being public about him wanting this rematch at 147. And and you see this, the, the Spence fans, you see everybody coming out just upset because he changed his mind and he's not a man of his word and blah, 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 blah. I, 
I got some thoughts on it. Correa, you, you want to jump on in, bro? What are your uh, thoughts? I know this was close to close to home for the fight. Um uh, I really don't got no problems with him flexing his muscle to having the fight at 147. You know, it's his right. That's what the contract uh states. Uh, it's not Terrence Crawford uh position to make sure that Earl Spence is comfortable. That's not his position. Mm. Terrence Crawford is supposed to do what's best for him. And this is another thing. All the, the Earl Spence fans who say, oh, Earl was made for of this. Well, Earl has never missed uh, weight on a scale, right? He has always made 147 efficiently. So, yeah, I have absolutely... Uh, no problem uh, with, with Terrence Crawford uh, flexing, you know, uh, the fight should be at 147 because that's what the contract says. And uh, also, uh, Terrence Crawford had to go through. In fact, you know. bro. In fact, let me play a quick clip. Shout out to uh, Travis Hartman and his, his YouTube channel weighing in with Travis Hartman. You guys give him a follow. Uh, but he actually had Terrence Crawford on this week. Terrence Crawford straight from Terrence Crawford's mouth. So you can stop the rumors. This is what he wants. Y'all Y'all listen in. Well, the contract states that um, either one or the other got to notify, you know, in writing that he no longer can make the weight. If not, then the fight will be at 47. So uh, the contract set states that it have to go at 47 since neither one, neither I or Arrow notify each other stating that we can not make the weight anymore. Y'all heard it, man. It's you got again. The the hardcore Arrow fans are livid, bro. Uh, I'm on Twitter a lot, and they're like, "Oh, he's going back on his war." The night off, he said he'd be cool with going up to 150. Listen, man. Bud got dragged through the mud for five years because he was on the wrong side of the street. The man's got some muscle now. The man's got some pull. On top of everything. If the fight was competitive, I think Bud would be doing the rematch because because it, it would sell. I think if you ask most boxing fans right now, nobody wants to see that rematch. The only people that want to see the rematch are the diehard <laughs> Errol fans. It's dangerous for him. Uh, Correa, you touched on it a little bit. We have reason to believe that Errol's not Errol, Errol's not going to be tip top shape or or you know there there. <laughs> I don't want to get too much into that, but we don't want to see the rematch. So it's going to be it's going to be a flop on a pay per view. Got to accept that. Bud's pulling the weight, flexing the muscle. He's got his eyes. The dude's in his mid thirties already. He's got on his eyes on the bigger fights, whether that be a, a new name like Boots, which I wouldn't mind seeing, or even chasing a Canelo. Like I, I'm not mad at Bud one bit, bro. I'm not. I think he's doing Errol a favor at the end of the day, too, dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, like you stated, <clears throat> excuse me, ladies. Only the diehard Spence fans want to see this day. That's it. Um, Earl Spence is our, our guy here in Dallas. You know, my favorite nice. fighter. You know, uh, no denying. But JJ. I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to keep saying this. That was a religious ass-whipping that Terrence Crawford put on Earl Spence Jr. And that's just not something that I want to see. And, and, and this is the reason being, right? We talk about Earl Spence. If we got time to go into this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. We, we, we talk about Earl Spence, right? You does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talk about Earl Spence. Earl done been through a lot. Yeah. In his career, right? And I want people to understand about Earl Spence car wreck that he had, right? Um, I know he came out saying, no broken bones, I'm a savage, you know. Which was irresponsible of Earl Spence in the events of that traumatic situation that happened, which was self-indulging of himself, right? 
you know, it, it was Bush League for Earl to say that um, no broken bones, I'm a savage, right? But in reality, if everybody watched that fight, like me, him, JJ Solomon, everybody on her who tuned in from the to uh, cross the pond, um, if you didn't think like that he gonna be the same or he won't have problems in the future um, after having that horrific accident. Um, no matter how we seen him come back looking great against Danny Garcia, coming back uh, looking great against Ugas. Um, I seen the figure that over a while you may not see the effect early. But you can see the effect late. And me speaking on that, Jose Jr. I know for a fact, Earl Spence Jr. is better than anybody Charles Crawford has ever fought in his life. Point blank period with three (coughs) (coughs) Dems, right? Terrence Crawford uh, made Earl Spence look like he was the easiest mm-hmm. opponent uh, that he ever fought. So my thing is, if people really care, you know, about Earl Spence Jr., if if his handlers, it's not about having the bravado. Yeah. Sticking your chest out or somebody talking trash and you got to automatically show you know how to throw them things and whoop yeah. whoop at every second of the moment. It, it's about thinking clear with a, a clear conscience and, and the people around Earl who really love Earl should understand that's how to fight. He should go into immediately, J.J., Immediately. After everything he been through, then the the religious beating mm-hmm. that Terrence Crawford gave him. And we talked about this yesterday too, dog. Like we always talk about Terrence Crawford's toolbox. We didn't. He didn't even have to switch it up, bro. He didn't even have to reach in his toolbox. It. He came out here, and what you saw Terrence Crawford doing in round one, he did in round in round nine. It was just the same, but getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, back to your point, man. Arrow safety. Now, I, I agree. And and let's let's look at Aunt Cam. He said, uh, he said, shit, that was gonna happen at 154 or at, two, at 219 in 2019. I, I felt for the longest that Bud would win that fight. I never expected it to look like that. Um you know that car wreck, bro. That car wreck, uh, I, I I'm not making excuses whatsoever. I'm I'm Kind of trying to paint some clarity here that what could we could be seeing. We know he slurs a lot more. I don't want to hear anything about the teeth. I mean, you still yeah, yeah, speak on that, JJ. You made a great point. Speak on that, please. No, yeah. I mean, the slurring is super obvious. If you look at pre-accident uh, interviews to post-accident interviews, and I know we're touching on this really late. I know the fight happened two months ago. Again, we've had some recent conversations with folks here connecting Dallas to just kind of give us some clarity on what's going on. Um. Uh, those type of accidents, you, it's impossible. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you're Superman to flip a car like that and come out with no internal damage. Those type of injuries, those type of that type of trauma, sometimes takes long to peep its ugly head, man. Peep its ugly head, and I think we that could be part of it. I think you know, Spence Spence has, has he went through a war with Bud, man, and it just something wasn't clicking there. Maybe affected the preparation. But all that to say, most fight fans don't want to watch this rematch. If you if you're if you're talking shit about Bud, that's because you hate Bud, and there ain't nothing he can do to change your mind. No matter whose ass he whoops, no matter how nice he is, how respectful he is, he's super respectful. Errol got paid. 
Arrow should be in that fight. It, boxing fans don't want to see it. I don't even want to see it, not because it, it's not competitive. I don't want to see it because I don't want to see Arrow put his life at risk like that no more. Like, Listen, it don't make sense. Like, when you take a whooping like that, you have to recover from that. Coming back right into this in December or even in February or March, no. You don't go against a guy like Terrence Crawford. You downgrade. Because that, that was a, a, t a type of beating that, that could take confidence away from you, right? And, and, and that's – look, Earl is a dog. He showed that in the fight. He didn't want to – that fight to be up. Well, he was like, ref, what you doing? Mm -hmm. Let me keep going, right? So this ain't questioning his heart or if he a dog or if he liked that. We know that. But what I'm saying is after take, taking a whipping like that, you don't go back in there with an opponent like that that quickly. Yeah. You work your set, set. If Earl want to continue boxing, fine and then. But if you're going to continue boxing, you have to work your way back up. Earl done made damn near $100 million, JJ, in his career. Like, he, now, I, I, I hope Earl, and I'm talking to you, Earl Spence, I hope you don't have the earth size ego. I, I hope you don't let your bravado, I, I hope you don't let these dudes who don't get inside that square circle or these panhandlers who on the side of you who trying to collect a check and want to be all in the camera, take a picture, click, click. I hope you not let them get in your ear and tell you that you need to do this because you pay. As a matter of fact, you don't have to step in the ring no more if you don't want to. That's how much money you make. But that's not our choice if you want to step in the ring. That's your choice. But if you're going to step in the ring, don't let your ego, Earl Spence, get the best of you. Facts, bro. That's 100% true. I, if Spence is going to, if he wants his rematch and really wants to get that get back, if he can't see it himself, his handlers should see it. The people who love him. Everybody, everybody would say, dog, like, go fight somebody. Get your confidence going back up. You had a long layoff since the Ugas fight. We don't know how effective your training camp was. We, we don't know if you were able to give it 100%. Get some confidence going. Get that timing back. Uh, the timing was way off. And yeah, you could say Bud cap it, that Bud stopped it. Yeah. Uh I, I didn't see anything new from Spence from the Ugas fight. There's a, a YouTube channel, and I've been meaning to, to, to send them some pro some props. It's a it's a badass YouTube channel. Check them out. They're called Boxing Gems, G-E-M-S. All they do is break down fights. And they have a clip on there, Ugas compared to uh the Crawford fight. And Errol was doing the same exact stuff. So what that tells me is they didn't bring in anything new to the table. There was no real preparation, no real studying. It was the same old game plan. And he thought he could just assert his athleticism and strength on him, and they were they were dead wrong. So if Errol's going to come back, do it smart, bro. Don't rush right back into the fire. I'm with uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, Aunt Cam, uh, but uh, Errol shouldn't fight ever again. I don't think Errol's ever going to top his, his accomplishments already, from the Olympics to the straps. I think we could start seeing a down a downslide. Now, my question to all those diehard Arrow fans: Would you rather say he got retired by Bud Crawford, which, yeah, I know it's gonna have to take some pride, <laughs> or would you rather say he got retired by Tim Zhu <laughs> or Brian Castillo? What if Arrow has just another one of those nights? I, I if I'm an Arrow fan, I want it. I want to say yeah. <laughs> That one beat beating is by the baddest man in 15 years that would lace him up. So, man, if, in the spirit of uh, in the spirit of safety, in the spirit of preserving yourself, family, <laughs> I'm just saying, dog. No, 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 you, you tell me the truth, JJ. Like they got to put their pride to the side. Like and Cam said, he don't think. Earl should never fight again, and you're right. I agree. Y'all yeah, gonna have to put y'all pride to the side. I, I know it hurts. You know, look look at me. I, I'm the one who had to come on here and eat the biggest grow. You know, to, to say I was absolutely wrong. But JJ, I'm, I'm with you. 
I'd rather see him retire against a guy who been on the best fight of the last 10, 15 years than uh, Brian Castaño or, or Tim Zhu. Erickson oh, Lubin, oh, you know, when Erickson, come out with a Erickson, fight. Sunday, Sunday, the, 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 him, 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 Inferno. Yeah, him, no. Yeah, man, it's just, it's too much to lose. Uh, Bus Stop Canelo said, uh, y'all scared for Errol. Look, dog, I, listen, I, I have Bud winning that fight. I, I've been saying it for the longest. I'm a big Bud. Crawl. I'm not one of those Errol guys or Bud guys. I love both those guys. Those guys are what boxing is. Go out there and fight. Uh, but no, I I'm, I respect these fighters, dog, and and I don't want I don't like seeing guys get fucking killed. I hate watching Riddick Bow interviews. I hate watching James Tony interviews. I hate watching Meldrick Taylor interviews. You know, Fernando Vargas is starting to lose it, uh, lose lose his ability to speak and function. I hate that shit, bro, because I love all these fighters. And now Errol Spence is in our backyard. I'll be posting Facebook memories from 2012, 2014. This guy's the next big thing. I don't want to see the guy suffer any long-term damage. He survived a vicious car accident. He's been through hell and back in the ring. I, The guy has had a hell of a career. Right off into the sunset, enjoy them horses. Enjoy that family. Make your money. Invest your money. You still got your – bro, I ain't got no – So you know what, Jay, only – you know, that's – Who's put that coming up again? Who, who, uh, Bud gonna stop Canelo. Shout out, man. He's, yeah, homeboy. The, 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 he got to be from the book of dummies, right? <laughs> he he got to be from the book of dummies, right? Because uh, when I mean that, and I say that respectfully, you know. So he said, "Bud gonna stop Canelo." You got to be from the book of dummies, right? It ain't about uh, being scared. It's too much later. We done. JJ already said Crawford was going to win. I was the one who said Earl was going to win. So JJ already knew Terrence Crawford was going to win this fight. So this is nothing new for JJ because he already knew. He was trying to tell me uh, on camera, behind the camera, uh, <laughs> in Vegas, in, uh, in California, everywhere we went, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, that Terrence Crawford was going to be Earl Spence. Now, it comes from the book of dummies like you to say to us, we scared for Earl. How can we be scared for him? See, that's when you don't use your your mind. They, they say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. We seen what Crawford did to Earl Spence. See, if, if, if you understand situations, you can see game recognized game. We know Terrence Crawford has showed us he is the far more superior fighter. Look, no debate. Would you want to see if this, if Bud Crawford get, get a beating put on him like that? You want to see him come back if he done already made a hundred million dollars and, and you know he just can't beat this guy or you know, or he done been through what he been through, like Earl Spence been through. Stop the nonsense. Well, 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 well. Let's uh, uh, eat thriller. Shout out, bro. The Black Picasso, one of our tightest homies. They crying over a rematch, but what happened to the neurological damage? I'll wait. Um, I, 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 I have always believed before the accident, after the accident, that that Bud just had too much skills for Arrow, man. Arrow was a. Mm -hmm. Errol just reminds me of a lot of uh, uh, just kind of that old school Mexican mindset, you know, and that's where he came up. He came up in that to one of the legends here in, in Texas, uh, DFW scene, Gene Vivero, Vivero. And you could you almost saw it in that fight. Forward, forward, forward. No adjustments, getting a hit. Mm -hmm. And like you said earlier, great. You do got some cojones. Nobody's ever going to question that. I just always thought Bud was too much. But I do think, uh, uh, especially just kind of hearing some of the buzz we've been hearing lately, that that you you would be silly to deny it that there's nothing wrong there's no long term lingering effect from that damage you took to the fight so again we that's all speculation. Hey, Earl Spence is still young. He's thirty three years old. Earl Spence has three children. Earl Spence has a mother and a father who's still living. Uh, do you want to see Earl Spence kids changing? His diapers, do do Earl Spence need to raise his kids or do his kids need to raise him? See, 
that's why y'all got to get out there. Crawford was the better man. Yeah, and I'm talking uh, to and I'm talking to that buzz off Canelo. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's shouting out though. He, he just you know shit. I, I I'm assuming he's just thinking with for Dallas. We just loving on Arrow. But the wreck wasn't an issue versus Danny or Ugas, was it? Go back and watch some side by side comparisons. Ugas isn't Crawford. Danny Garcia isn't Crawford. But there's a lot of similarities in the game plan, which just I I'm. Both of y'all, like, everybody's right here. Ain't no wrong. Like, Arrow was going to lose anyway, like, you know. But there is some, like, there's, there's, there hasn't been any progress, is what I'm trying to say, since the Danny Garcia fight. That was being his first fight back. You would expect to see him getting better and better and better. We haven't seen any progress. We're seeing him getting worse and worse and worse. He looked better against Danny than he did, get, did against Ugas. I'm talking about just kind of those vulnerabilities. Yeah, he stopped Ugas, but he took some shots. Anyway, I think we went a little bit long on the Bud uh, Bud Spence thing, but that's normal because these two guys electrify the sport. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, Bud, Bud's got his eyes on Canelo, but we just caught some news about Canelo's future after September 30th. Let's take a quick, quick break, and let's talk about that. We all have battles. We fight. We train. We work. persevere and we celebrate we are all one i can't do anything if i can't walk in my prosthetic it's a lot of pain that i feel throughout my day it can be very intense now i just put that balm over it and it will heal up much faster and i'll love the callus recovered that's amazing it is a total game changer. I am hooked. I am absolutely, I, I'm just hooked. Life is hard. KO makes it better. KOCBD.com. KOCBD.com. Discount code TSB10. I promise if you're getting old like I am and your body's always aching. My little girl just sprained her ankle. I forgot to tell you all this. My little girl just sprained her ankle. We went to a concert on Tuesday. She was loading up on that KOCBD. I promise you guys. She comes and asks me to put it on her. So y'all check them out. Thanks to our friends over at KO Therapeutics. Um, let's get back in on this, Corey. Uh, Big news coming out of boxing. Uh, yesterday, I believe. Yesterday, the day before, Mauricio Suleiman speaks about making David Benavidez uh, the mandatory for Canelo March next year for his second PBC fight. Everybody keeps asking, what's that second and third fight going to be? Suleiman kind of put an end to all that. We always got Canelo and Charlo fighting in September, uh, in next weekend. And uh, and then Benavidez and Andre, I'm not sure if it's official, but it's damn near locked in for November. But Suleiman came out and said, David Benavidez will be Alvarez's next mandatory. He is the interim champion. Mandatory for contender for the WBC. Benavidez's terms for mandatory status is in March 2024. It will absolutely be a great fight. A lot of people have been licking their chops for this, calling Canelo a duck. Correa, does that excite you? Oh, it very much excites me. Um, finally, thank you, Mauricio Suleiman. This is what I'm talking about uh, with boxing, JJ. It takes all of this. Like, yeah. that is the fight we've been wanting. But it can take it, it keep taking all of this. I was talking to Ethro the Black Wakasa. Shout out to him. Shout out to General Big Fish. And man, you talk about this all the time. It takes all of this to make these fights happen. happen. Yeah. Am I excited about it? Kinda. But then at the end of the day, I don't know what Canelo gonna do or, or if Canelo even gonna take this fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh March twenty four, because uh at the end of March twenty twenty four, because at the end of the day, Jay, what do belts mean to Canelo Saul Alvarez? Like at his stage of his career right now. I I, I wouldn't think I mean I don't think his number one focus is the belts. So I think I know where you're going with this. And I think the three of us here, because Bud, the guys that we were just talking, uh, the guys that were just going back and forth, Bud going to stop Canelo. I was going to bring this up. They're giving Canelo a way out of the Bud fight. Benavidez been the mandatory. I know this <laughs> sounds ridiculous. I, I'm a boxing purist <laughs> to the heart, dog. I hate conversations about moving up and jumping weight. All that shit is circus talk. 
But if there's one guy who I think could do it, it's Bud Crawford, especially with a not that much bigger. Yeah, he's got the bigger statue and Cane stature and Canelo. But I think Canelo is a perfect matchup for Bud. Now, Canelo knows he's been kind of on the down slope. He's addressed it. He's acknowledged it. Canelo's got a chip on his shoulder. Next weekend is going to answer a lot of questions. Are we going to see the old Canelo back? If we see that old Canelo back, I think a lot of this chat, chatter about Bud and Canelo is going to stop. But going back to what this was all about, the WBC, they've always kind of how people say Al Heyman protects his fighters. Mauricio Suleiman protects his Canelo, just like Jose Suleiman protect, protected his Chavez. And you see the things that went on with Bebo and all that. Could they be posturing? Do you think Canelo would drop it to avoid Benavidez? Or do you, man, or you think we're gonna see it? it bro, I'm excited about that fight because I've been I'm very critical on Canelo, but I've always said that Canelo on his A day, prime Canelo, I think shuts a lot of people up against David Benavidez, prime Benavidez. And I, I everybody is like, you got to choose a side. Do you hate Canelo or love Canelo? I think the world of Canelo, I just ain't that crazy about his opponents that he picked, but I would love to see that fight, dog, and I hope we see it. Yeah, I'm I, I'm excited, but you know it's just hard to get excited, JJ. Yeah, uh, we, we we've been talking about these fights for a long time. Is they gonna happen? You know, look look, everybody, including you, me, and a lot of other people, we got tired of talking about Charles Crawford, Earl Spencer. Hell yeah! Like you know, and there's other young fighters I who, who I think we're gonna talk about later. You know, now they finna be the new wave in discussion uh -huh. for the next three or four years because you know the fights are not going to happen right now. I'm just tired of it, bro. Like, boxing is uh, becoming a, the absolute WWE. Like, this is the world wrestling entertainment, man. This ain't, 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 ain't the purest of, of, of what boxing was built built on, and it's sickening. You know, to have these fighters out here who have this talent who can help the sport grow, who can keep us intrigued. We can't think like football or, mm -hmm. or even basketball where you got uh, games every day or every other day of football every week. You can look forward to that. In boxing, it's a, a where they go, Waldo, where they go. Mm -hmm. It might be right here, right there, over there, back there, ooh, left, <laughs> right, all of that. that. That's just where we at right now, bro, and it's sickening. So, um, you know, I'm just not excited. You know, I, I don't – trust boxing I, I don't trust the sanctioning bodies i don't trust none of these fighters uh, I, i'm i'm gonna keep holding all these fighters accountable and and, and i'm glad you uh brought up terrence crawford right because he uh you know me i ate a lot of crow i shout out to my dog eat through a little black picasso uh, and, and a special salute to general big fish i got to give him his credit because i was going at him about this, right? I was going at him, you know, because I say, oh, Crawford, you know, he beat up out of Earl Spence and, you know, whoop de whoop. He deserved to do this. I was going at, you know, Big Fish, and I got to say, I apologize to Zone 6. I was going at them because they was like, no, nah, man, no patty cake, patty cake, Baker man with Crawford. Okay, what? He beat Earl Spence. Now, don't talk about he could do what he wants to do. No, it's time for you to fight the fights. We want to see you fight. Now, Crawford, that's a guy named Boots Ennis right there. Right now, you talk about holding up divisions, JJ. Yeah. Right? We know we don't want to see this Earl Spence fight. And, you know, anybody who close to Earl Spence know he shouldn't go back into this fight next. I'm looking at Earl Spence ain't taking this fight, right? That's how I'm taking it because mm -hmm. if you really love that dude and you care about him, you're going to advise him. This, is, this ain't what you want to do. Coming off the loss, you went and go right back into this right here, right? So it's a guy, 147. His name is Kyle Jerron Boost Ennis, right? See, now, we we, we we could give Crawford his praise, but it's been two or three months in there of praiseness, and he talking about Canelo and them and whoop de whoop He want to be on this new high horse, you know, saddling up, you know, because he got the big piece of pie on the, you know, like whoop de whoop and all of that. But we can't live. We got the whole Terrence Crawford accountable now. Right, like General Big Fist was trying to tell me. You got guys out there like Keith Thurman, who General Big Fist was trying to tell me. Keith Thurman only lost one fight, JJ. Look, no matter what we think of Keith Thurman, he made me. He, he's not going That mic is messing up when you're clapping up. 
Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a lot of he, feedback he, on the mic. He's not going to be the favorite, Jay, going against Terrence Crawford. Boots not going to be the favorite. But them are excellent fights that Terrence Crawford can make because, like I said again, General Big Fish told me, this is the same guy who was complaining about them other guys doing him like that. Now, Crawford, you was the undisputed champion. You know, we know Earl shouldn't take this fight. I'm taking it as Earl not taking this fight. What you going to do? Is you going to fight this young stop talking Canelo? Because, you know, that's that's not even a poss possibility. Because, like, E. Thriller uh, was telling me Canelo did an interview. And Canelo said he only beat one great fighter, right? Like, he said, this fight would do nothing for me. Y'all wouldn't give me no credit for beating Terrence Crawford. And that's true, JJ. People wouldn't really give Canelo no credit for beating Terrence Crawford. They're going to say that's what Canelo was supposed to do. Facts. Facts, so, bro. I now, I want to talk about that real quick. Before I do, I want to just post this up there because I voted, forgot to post it. Ant Camp said, I can tell 214 used to love wrestling. <laughs> is that true or is that not true? Uh, bro, I was the biggest <laughs> wrestling fan in, in the world. Still love wrestling, you know, especially with an uh, eight-year-old son and, yeah. you know, 15, 16-month-old baby. Now, you know, I got to keep the tradition going. Hell, yeah. But getting back to that, dog, I, I present this to you, bro. Right now, Bud is going to be put yet again in a situation where he's going to be damned if he does, damned if he don't. If he doesn't, if he keeps chasing, he's at the dude, he's old, he's getting old, so he's got to be selective. A lot of people will accuse him of taking these bullshit fights if he fights Keith Thurman. He's going to be padding up the resume, you know. And yeah, Boots Ennis is there, but what kind of credit is Bud going to get for beating Boots Ennis, bro? Like, I know it's his job if he stays at 147, absolutely, don't hold it up. Keep fighting these contenders. But Bud's thinking money now, and I don't blame him because he's already, what, knocked out every damn welterweight they put in front of him. What else does he have to prove? So with that being said, don't hold up the weight division. There's juicy fights at 154. Go check. I, I would be perfectly fine with, with Bud saying, my work here is done, but now he's kind of just got to wait for this Errol shit to air, iron out, bro. He don't want to fight Errol again. So it's like, what do you do if you're Bud? Fight somebody like a Boots, who's a, a, a badass next big name. Fight somebody like a Keith Thurman, who's an old name. And nobody, I mean, the only person calling him out is Clarissa Shields. Uh, so I, I don't know who gives a damn about that fight. And defend his belt at 147. Or if he moves up to 154, then he kind of has to fight Errol because of, of the blowback he's going to get, but I would rather see him fight a, a Charlo or any of the other names at 154. I don't know what, what's the right move. But JJ, you he's say move up the... He's going to get attacked regardless. Man, listen, you say he move up the... what's best for him. But, but but what's best for him right now? The Canelo Alvarez fight is not a possibility, JJ. No, especially with what we said about, about Benavidez and... and, and yeah, uh, that's not a possibility. So let's X that off the list. 154... Okay, Jamel's still going to have three belts there. Now, okay, that is a, a great option. Hell is he yeah. going to go up there and fight Jamel next? But, JJ, what if Jamel beat Canelo? Just say hypothetically because Jamel Charlo, in my opinion, got a great chance he could win this fight if he stick with the game plan and listen to what his coach, Juan Guzman. Once again, listen to his coach, what Juan <laughs> Guzman. See what you did there. That's <laughs> to say, all right. So it's a chance he could really win this fight. What if Charlo win this fight? Then it's going to be a, a, a rematch uh, with Canelo immediately, JJ. So that's going to take place. So that's going to be 50. So where's Crawford at? What's he going to do? What you going to go to to uh, 154? We were talking about this earlier. He thought it's like he, uh, he go to Australia, but what's he going to go to Australia for and take that chance of the, even though that's gonna be the biggest money he can make, JJ. Because if he go to Australia and fight Tim Zoo, that's gonna be super huge over there in Australia, and he can make millions and millions of pounds, as they would say, right? So, uh, uh, is he gonna do that uh, and take the chance of uh, uh, of them uh, messing him up on the scorecard? Or even the possibility of Tim Zoo not turns Crawford ain't really got no options. Eh? He don't it, have it, no just clear options. Every option is debatable. Uh, I, I 
I would like to see. I, I want to make it clear. I would like to see Bud versus Boots. If I had to pick right now, you know, I don't think either one of them got a fight scheduled. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, it's already been two months since you fought. If the, if Bud put on, on Twitter yesterday he was weighing at 180 pounds. So he's he's put on some weight, walking around, you know, enjoying that money, enjoying the media, enjoying the spotlight. But he said he wants the winner of Canelo and Charlo. So I don't see Charlo winning that fight. Well, JJ, how, how is he going to get the winner of Canelo and Charlo? Like, I, we got to do – how he say he won them. Do he got that – Oh, shit. We lost him. Oh, there you go. We, do you, oh, no, what do you he, saying? You, you dropped for a I second. Said, I said, uh, you talk about uh, he want the winner of Canelo versus yeah. Charlo, right? Okay. Um, do he got that much weight? Like, but even if Charlo win, it's going to be a rematch against Canelo. And if Canelo win, he got other business that he has to take care of. Uh, like you stated, I think Canelo got too much pride to drop his belts. That's why, you know, I can see a, the Benavidez fight happening. So, like, what? where is Crawford at in this equation? Because he's a one, like, he can go to 154, but is him and Craw is him and Jamel Charlo going to get made? Who, who going to be the A-side? Is Crawford going to think he the A-side or Jamel Charlo? Because it really is Jamel Charlo division still. Is Crawford... Because, you know, Jam Jamel ain't going to do all them, take all them tricks and things yeah, yeah. That, that, that Crawford did to get in his negotiations. You think Al Heyman is rushing to make Charlo versus Bud, Canelo versus Bud? Like, that's another thing. We saw Charlo ringside almost dismissing Bud. Like, what's he talking about? I don't need that. You know, I, I already been there. Almost seems like Charlo don't want it. Canelo saying he ain't ever beat nobody but besides Spence. Almost seems like Canelo don't want it. It's going to be real hard for Bud to lock down one of these big fights, bro, because of the ass whooping he just put on the guy we had number three or four pound for pound in the world. The 50-50 fight, bro. So my point. Yeah, his best option is Jerron Boos Ennis, or going to fight Tim Zhu in Australia, and we know he's not going to Australia. I don't think so, Tim wants it either, bro. And, they and, asked and, him. And JJ, I, I know Boos Ennis ain't no champion, right? But when we look at Boos Ennis, don't your artists tell oh, you yeah. the real deal? Absolutely, absolutely. And he is number one and one of them rankings in the sanctioning bodies, you know, it he do it, it is his time. You know, a lot of fighters, uh, look at Marvin Hagler, you know, uh yeah. He, he didn't get his shot. He had to work his way through the sanctioning bodies until they finally gave him a shot. I I'm not I got turns Crawford over boots. I, I pick I pick him to be oh, boots. No no question, bro. Like but, but that's the, that's that's his options, I say. No, I agree. And listen, he just beat a guy that a lot of the Arrow fans and the people that were eating crow and the people were hurting are saying, ah, you beat an old Arrow. You beat an old Arrow, a washed up Arrow. Something was wrong with Arrow. Well, now you got a young, hungry bull like Boots Ennis. Now the criticism might be, wow, well, he, who has he fought? Like there's always going to be something. But I'm with you. I think out of everything we just mentioned – I would love to see uh, Bud versus Charlo. I would love to see Bud versus Canelo. But I think we're getting a little carried away because 2023 has treated us so well in boxing that we forget now there's going to be all kinds of ways to get out of that fight. We've seen Canelo get out of the big fights. We've seen people, we've seen the PBC do what they do, man. I'm not sitting here knocking on PBC, but we've seen them do what they do. That was good. That seems like either one of those fights would take forever to make back and forth. Well, backing out of the contract. So the easiest fight, obviously, would be Boots. I would like to see it. And I think that would be a statement fight for Crawford, too. I, I think he would get his credit. Uh, I, I don't think he thinks he's going to get the credit. But, no, I, if you if you stop an up-and-comer like that, the next big thing, shit. I, I, I'm i all for that fight, dog. I'm Virgil, all for it. 
Virgil Ortiz. Uh, matter of fact, where, where are you, Virgil Ortiz? Virgil what said he was good? in the gym yesterday. Oh, he in the gym? He put on Twitter, oh, yeah. Okay, all right. I know we want to see him, dog. I know we want to see him. He's coming soon. Um, I'm just going to check these comments real quick before we get on to the next topic. Let's see. Bud going to stop Canelo. Canelo or Charlo want the smoke, let's be honest. They don't want it or they want it? I would love to see it, dog. <laughs> I, I would love to see it. I don't know that Charlo wants it. Uh, I don't know that Canelo wants it. I think it's too much at risk for Canelo. Uh, I don't know. All right, bro. Let's take a quick break. We're going to talk a little bit about Shakur and Devin and the back and forth. We'll take a real quick preview of this weekend's fight, and then we'll let y'all go on about y'all's business, but just stay tuned real quick. All right, listen up, guys. We're calling all Little League coaches. We're calling all middle school coaches. Calling all high school coaches. We're calling out all those team mamas. If you need team uniforms, if you need jerseys, accessories, whatever gear you're looking for for the team, please check out our friends over at Elite Sportswear. These guys do it all, and they do it great. So if you're needing a brand new look for the younger athletes, for the teams, do me a favor. Trust us with Elite Sportswear. Uh, these guys do all of our gear here at Spit Bucket Podcast, hats, shirts, hoodies. We could not be more pleased with them. So check them out over at uh, thebetteruniform.com. You can find them on Facebook at The Better Uniform uh, or on Instagram, Elite Sportswear 17. That's Elite Sportswear 17 on Instagram. Again, if you want your team looking super fly on game days, do yourself a favor, do the squad a favor. Call Roderick and the team over to Elite Sportswear ASAP. Let them know the Spit Bucket Podcast sent you. Yes, sir. Salute to our home. <coughs> Sportswear. Check them out at thebetteruniform.com. Um, yeah, let's get into this, dog. Uh, uh, somebody said, hope Burge was healthy. Hey, we hear Burge was healthy. Um, you know, he's he's in damn near literally my backyard, uh, out there jogging, running. So he's he looking, you know, I, I think we're going to see a comeback. I think that stuff's behind him, uh, especially if he's moving up in weight. But um, – I just wanted to get on here, bro, and talk. You know, I know there's not been anything new from Haney or Shakur. We got, you know, Haney versus Progray coming up. But Shakur been on fire. I don't have the video clips, but I probably wouldn't be able to play them because it was nothing but <laughs> censor, 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 censor. <laughs> Dude's on fire. I just want to make sure people understand this. Shakur Stevenson didn't duck Devin Haney. Like, they keep saying, oh, it's the same situation as Frank Martin. <laughs> Look, you got to walk this down. Haney offered 25%. Shakur rejected the offer, not the fight. He then went to, to make himself the mandatory through the sanctioning bodies for a purse bid. So he said, no, I'm better than 25%. Let me go get this purse. Let me go. Let's do the purse bid. Devin then moved up. So there was no purse bid. So you can argue that Devin walked away. I'm not going to say anybody ducked. I've got a theory for what Devin's doing here in a bit because uh, I, I I think this is the play for Haney. Well, Frank Martin, Frank Martin, his people agreed to a fight, which canceled the purse bid. There's no more purse bid. And then he pulled out. So it's completely different. Shakur didn't reject the fight. He rejected the offer. Um, I just want to make sure people understand that because – Shakur's getting a lot of criticism. Now, in hindsight, Corey, you cool if I, like, break down what we were talking about, what I think Haney's doing? All right, because I've been talking too long. My bad. Mm -mm -mm. Haney's got this fight against Regis that's being billed as a dangerous fight, a tough fight. My gut, my eyes, my heart tells me that Devin is going to run away with that fight, and Devin's going to make it look easy. I think what the narrative is going to be after that is – Devin Haney is now the super A side. He went up to 140. Look what he did to a champ in, in Regis Progre. Now, deservingly so. Because, yeah, there is some danger to, to Regis' elements, his power, his awkwardness. Um, I think Devin's going to make it look good. Now, I'm a, I'm a big Shakur fan. In hindsight, I think Shakur should have taken that now. Because after this Haney fight, after this Progre fight, Haney's going to be able to do whatever the hell he wants. Because now he's got the strap at 140. He, he, I feel he's going to make it look easy. Devin's going to want to come out and make a statement, dog. He's going to make it look easy. And now, what has Shakur done? What has Shakur done? So, in hindsight, I think Shakur should have taken that. 
But I, I just want to make sure y'all understand what that process looked like. Yeah, he may have made the mistake in not taking the 25%, but he pursued the fight. He wanted it. Devin took off to 140 to play his cards right. And I'm not mad at him because he's positioning himself beautifully, dog. <laughs> I wanted to clear that up and just kind of let y'all know how I think that Haney Regis shit is going to play out. What are your thoughts, Corey? Oh, no. I totally 100% uh, percent, uh, agree with you. Like, I tell people, it wasn't a duck, you know. Uh, Shakur Stevenson know that he 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 worth more than twenty five percent. Like that he not Frank Martin. This this ain't offering Frank Martin it. Uh, so he went another route. But like you say in hindsight, now he should have took that twenty five percent. I agree. Devin Haney, and I agree with you, Jay. He's going to go up He's going to put on the show. And the reason why he's going to put on the show. Uh, is because I truly think he did beat Lomachenko, JJ. And, and I think he beat Lomachenko in, in sensational fashion. Lomachenko is a three three division champion. It wasn't like he was coming another lay down. The dude could really fight. People, Some people, a lot of people, everybody around the world say Lomachenko was the best amateur of all time. And, and another thing, JJ, Lomachenko did the unthinkable. He, he didn't come in taking it the easy route. Lamatico came straight from the amateurs fighting top guys and champions early in, in his career. So, with the with the uh, the, the the naysayers uh, of people who, who criticized Devin Haney on his performance against Lamatico, they didn't do nothing but build fire inside that guy. And especially now with Shakur doing all this talking, and Shakur got the right to talk because, like Shakur say, he a bad mother. Shut your mouth. And that's clear cut, no debating, JJ. He's a bad boy. And, 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 uh, and that's clear cut. But Devin Haney finna come out and show he a bad boy too. Devin Haney finna come out and show uh, why we've been mentioning his name since he was a little boy. Why he came out holding that build up for Zab Judah at a young right. age, walking to the ring, JJ. Uh, I, I'm with you 100% on this. I got much. Respect for Regis Pro, right? Uh, I know dude is coming to fight, uh, but, you know, um, Devin Haney is, is what I consider special. Uh, just like I look at uh, 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 Shakur as a special, uh, uh, Javante is as a special. Uh, I, I'm not saying that Regis can't do the unthinkable and, right. and, and, and win this fight. But but the the numbers tell us the 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 young up and coming strong guys who are considered special they take out the older guys who who in their early thirties and I think Reed is like thirty four, thirty three, thirty four. Now you got Devin Haney, young twenty four. He gonna be stronger than ever. Jose Junior going up to one forty, not having to cut all mm -hmm. that weight down. To get to 135, oh, I think it's going to be a master class. And like you say, he beautifully. Like, I, I, I don't know if, if, if people watch tennis. You know how you beautifully set up one of them little corner shots like, bow! Mm -hmm. And the, the, the points of you, that's what Devin Haney did. And like you said, JJ, he is the super A-side yeah. after this fight especially after what we're about to see in my opinion and i and i want to just take a moment what what i said earlier about errol spence for example you're supposed to be getting better or whatever we're supposed to see improvements devin haney my biggest criticism even though he mopped the floor with cambosis two times i was like why didn't you hit the body you could have finished his ass if you worked that body maybe some uppercuts because you know cambo was leaving leaning then we saw with the exception of what terence crawford did on july 29th Devin Haney's body attack on Lomachenko was the prettiest thing I've seen in boxing all year. It was a sustained, planned uh, a body attack that he went to the lab and mastered. So that tells me he's still mastering his craft. That tells me we still haven't seen the best of Devin Haney. He has a chip on his shoulder. Tired of Shakur talking trash. Uh, the, the criticism. He's boring. Somebody just put on here. Haney boring. I get all that, but he's getting... We might see. We're gonna. He wasn't boring in this last fight, JJ. No, he didn't. He wasn't enough boring. That was a hell of a fight. All right, so. Yeah. With all that being said, I still think Shakur beats him. I, I <laughs> seen uh, 
Gerald Bayfield, what's up? Super, a super duck. Uh, John Shula, that sounds good, JJ. Ha <laughs> ha, that's still a duck. I don't call what Shakur did a duck. I don't call any of these champs a duck. Uh, he should have taken the money in hindsight. Now he's going to have a harder road to get these straps because people don't want to fight him. He should have taken that money. He would have been in the driver's seat. In my opinion, I think he'd have beat Haney. But, hey, we're all grown-ass men. We all can make our choices. Just like Frank Martin chose not to take that money. Can't be mad at him. Shit, you're fighting one of the most dangerous fighters in the world. I'm not mad at it, man. But it does say, who posted this comment earlier? Just yawn, boxing, same old stuff, dog. <laughs> you know, the gameplay, the gameplay. All that shit. So, damn, I was about to say something. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. Let's, 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 <laughs> Haney Powers, 9%. Hold on, man. Somebody had a <laughs> comment that I want to pick up. He's too respectful and getting disrespectful like he do with Devin and Frank. I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out, fellas. I just wanted to put some clarity. It's not like, like, like Shakur. Well, I'm going to say this. I, I don't like the fact, you know, he called his daddy a, a hoe, but and I don't like the fact oh, yeah. that, that Devin Haney came back and said something about this mom. I don't like that. I think that's uh that's that's too much. You know, I think you know that that's too much. You know, I think they both uh better than that, but Shakur, he incited it. So I think Devin Haney had the right to respond back. But you know, y'all fighting each other. It's your daddies, your mamas, your cousins, your sisters, your brothers, they don't got nothing to do with it. So I I would say to his point, I think it was disrespectful. Uh, by Shakur, so for so even calling his daddy, you know, the dude who had him and raised him, mm -hmm. calling him a, ho a hoe. Uh, it, you know, I think it was still bad for Devin Haney, but can't help Devin Haney from responding because of what he said about his daddy. So I'm going to say this. So I just would advise Shakur, you know, keep it on the fighters. Yeah. Yeah, this is a push. Shakur fighting for Devin Belt. Haney avoiding Shakur. It's nothing new. It's boxing, dog. It's a sport we love and a sport we hate at the same time. I feel you guys. Um, well, Corey, let's just take a quick look at the boxing weekend, bro. We got a bit of a, a triple header, if you want to call it that. But we got the Zhang Joyce rematch, a heavyweight. We saw uh, Zhang come in, pull off a big upset back in April with the six round finish of Joe Joyce. Uh, Corey, you thinking that fight's going to look any different, bro? Or are you thinking, what are your thoughts on the Joe Joyce uh, Zhang rematch? We had the face off. A little bit earlier this week today. I don't know, Jay. I mean, Zang knocked him out, you know, and stopped him, right? And it's hard to come back from stuff like that. But Jay, um, you ain't a true fighter if you ain't took no loss. I'm telling you this. Your downfalls be your your greatest accomplishments because when you have a downfall in something, that puts something in you to make you come work harder and do the things that you never did uh, before to make sure this don't happen again. I like Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce always uh, been a top heavyweight. Uh, I think Joe Joyce redeems himself in this fight, JJ. I, I truly do. And yeah, if I'm wrong, I give much respect to Zane. I I, I just think Joe Joyce, look, look, Zane beat him. But I think technically sound, Joe Joyce is the better fighter. And, and I think Joe Joyce underestimated him. Maybe he did. Maybe Zane come do it again. That's just in my opinion. But I, I look at this as like Lennox Lewis versus Haseem Rockman, how Lennox Lewis underestimated Haseem Rockman when we knew he was the way better talented guy. You know, uh, only thing about Rock Rockman did have skills, but Rockman could punch. Mm -hmm. Just like Zane, he does have skills, but, you know, he he, he, he big. He, he, can he could punch. punch. Yeah, and he could punch. So I, I got Joe Joyce. I think Joe Joyce had a learning moment uh, in April, and I think uh, he's going to come back and redeem himself. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, and I know uh, Zhang pulled it off, and it wasn't just a one-punch knockout. It wasn't a lucky shot. He was tagging him all night, shut that eye up, ref stopped it. And Joe Joyce is going to show – or Joe Joyce is going to try to show that it's okay to get a zero. It's okay to, to, to get lose that zero. It's okay to lose. 
He's trying something different now. He said today he's gonna weigh, uh, he's gonna come in heavier. Uh, so that tells me he's tweaking some things up. So maybe we'll see a different game plan. Hey, Zon's a dan like you see an old, an old fella with that look. You probably are gonna <laughs> overlook him a little bit. Everybody's talking about Joe Joyce being the future. Maybe he did overlook him. I'm not making no damn excuses. Zon put on a hell of a performance and shut a lot of people up. But we'll see the rematch. Hey, let's take it back real quick. Just General Big Fish wanted to. Pull it back. Appreciate the super chat, Big Fish. I don't mm -hmm. want to hear what you should have done hindsight. <laughs> There's a hypocrite for criticizing Frank and did almost, I like that you said almost, the same thing. Clean up the sport, JJ. Take Shakira out of witness protection. <laughs> hey, dog, look. My career in front of you guys, I'm new to this, all right? And I'm new to, I'm relatively new. I've been uh, I've been rocking with Corey for a couple years now. But overall, I'm still new. And since I've been, I haven't, I haven't put my eggs in one basket like I have with Shakur. So yeah, maybe I'm being a little bit biased. <laughs> I'm just tired of the Shakur. I hate dog. Like, look, the way I felt about Bud and that special, special a long, long time ago. It's how I feel about Shakur, dude. But I just think I think Shakur is gonna get that attention earlier. We'll see. I could be wrong. I'll be eating crow like my hell. I think he should have taken that 25%. At the time, I was like, 25%, that's ridiculous. But now uh, it's going to it's gonna be hard to get them fights, man. So appreciate the appreciate the super chat. Hey, you thank got you, any follow-up? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was talking to you. <laughs> yeah, that was all me. I'll eat it, dog. I'll eat it. I ain't protecting the man. You're going to see, bro. You're going to see against Edwin. And I know y'all going to say, who's Edwin? No, he, he he's gonna look good and he's gonna make statements and and a year from now, two years from now, I want you to remember. Damn, JJ was right. These people wore a hey, 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 JJ, wore listen, you and you know you had to convince me, and, and now you know I'm all the way in on Shakur. Uh, I, look, I I just um look, and I. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, what's JJ. that mic? Rubbing on your skirt a lot. JJ, he, he a bad man, JJ. Oh, yeah. Fact. Sh Shakur a bad man, and he going to be a tough out. Like, he, he, he going to be a tough out. Facts, facts, bro. Let's get back. Hey, Lukey jumps in and says, man, y'all can skip this weekend. He said, let's get this <laughs> Let's get to some slander on Connor. Ben. We get there, dog. We get in there. We get there. We got. Uh, uh, we had the second leg of the of the triple header this weekend with Richardson Hitchens against uh, uh, Jose Chon Cepeda. You know, a lot of people been has been a lot of buzz about Hitchens, bro. Uh, this is his fight. He's big step up in competition. Uh, he's coming in as the favorite. Uh, 16 and oh, what are your thoughts? Uh, is Hitchens gonna make that? Is he gonna make that that name? Is he gonna make that statement? Yes, uh, JJ, this is where you talk about special. Um, Hitchens just never had this opportunity, but he come from that same clout as Shakur Stevenson, as Keyshawn Davis, they all from the same city in Newark, New Jersey, and they all built for tough. When you talk about this guy. Uh, growing up with Shakur, even working with Shakur in training camp still, even seeing Richard Hitchison's in his last fight. That dude is absolutely the real deal, JJ. And I like Zapata, truly do. But I just think Hitchison, he's I there. think Hitchison is, he is, he is, yeah. Hey, bro, and if you're sitting there at 140, like you got to be licking your chops because you got – uh, a, a division where, uh, you know, Teofimo Lopez, we've seen him look amazing. Like, when that dude's on, he's on. Not crazy about his antics outside the ring, him or his pops. But but the rest of the division is a little soft, man. And if you can come in and make a big, big splash, if I'm at 140, if I'm Hitchens, I'm seeing this as an opportunity to get launched into the mix and go fight for a strap, dog. So I'm looking forward to that. Now... Uh, I don't, I don't even want to give this guy too much attention, but Connor Ben is back. Um, you know, I believe everybody deserves a second chance. Maybe not so much in boxing where your, where your objective is to beat the shit out the guy in front of you. Um, but we've seen Canelo come back from positive tests. We've seen Roy Jones Jr. Come back from positive tests and everybody just kind of accepts it. Uh, Connor Ben's getting a lot of heat 
on social media for coming back. And I think it's just because of the way he handled the whole situation. And then he just kind of slides into the card. Nobody knew he was fighting this weekend. And then Eddie Hearn and Matchroom just slipped him on in in Florida. The British, bo the British Boxing Board of Control, BBBOC, came out and said, he still ain't clear. That don't sit well with me, that he still hasn't clear, cleared his name. It's been about a year now. Do you give a damn, Corey? Do you think he needs to be banned forever? I mean, everybody deserves a second chance. I just hate how he's handling it, dog. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, man? Um, I listen to this show, Talk Sport Boxing, across the pond, and um, they are real big on the BB, uh, BOC, uh, British Board of Boxing Control. They are real big on it. Um, you have had um, Eddie Hearn mm -hmm. on there with this guy named Simon, Simon, and 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 they went back and forward about that. I'm talking about they got real two good ones on talk sport boxing. Two good ones where Simon is really asking um, Eddie Hearn the tough questions, right? And and the one thing is, I heard Eddie Hearn say how he respect the British boy boxer of control, right? And and the the, the heritage on that. So I, I'm just confused right now as a boxing fan, me paying attention uh, to how they, they talk boxing and, and do boxing across the pond and how the British Board of Control is huge over there. And, and, and if you're a British fighter, that is your legitimacy over there as uh, being a fighter. And to her, Eddie Hearn, do these two explosive interviews he had with this dude named Simon on Talk Sport Boxing, then to sneak him on the card like this, now JJ, that's Bush League. Why did he sneak him out the blue on a card like this? Kind of being, look, this is the reason why I have a problem with it. Kind of being, you pop dirty, right? Eddie Hearn, he popped dirty. I know kind of being is a lot of dollar signs because he come from his pops in the ups. I know he a lot of dollar signs, but just like every other fighter pop dirty, Eddie Hearn, you should have let the public have their due diligence to know that Conor Ben was going to be on this card. So Conor Ben would have to face that smoke. This has gave Conor Ben a clear way out of having to uh, answer all the questions he would have leading up, especially not being cleared by the BBOC and all that other stuff. So I just think it's Bush League, especially how I heard Eddie Hearn talking. Oh, yeah, you know, man. Recently. Yeah, hey, uh, Eddie, Eddie Hearn is is uh, you can tell he's got the gift of gab. He's he's a, he's a charmer. He he woos you with his his words, and and you you want to believe him because he's got all this energy and smiling, and he's oh and hey the, hey mate no and other you know what I'm saying <laughs> it's just easy to to believe the jolly guy, but he's he's been showing a lot of hypocrites criticism hypocriticism and uh and double standards the way he just jumps on people when they fail a test, but when if it's his fighters. Let's make it easy. Now we got Lukey boxing, and I listen to Lukey because Lukey's plugged in, uh, and he, and he's got some things to say. I want to say if John the janitor tested positive for any PED, no one would let him fight. Ben is only being allowed back because of money. They'll throw it under the bus later. Just exactly what you said, Corey. Ben today at the presser, they had no mention of his positive test. I'm sure they told the media to shut the hell about it. They announced the fight on Wednesday, which seemingly was a way to sneak it into a card and be able to point. To no one saying anything about his first fight. Most people didn't know he was fighting. This was literally news yesterday, dog. The fight is Saturday. So, again, my what I really hate about this, dog, is when you talk about PEDs and boxing, it's what? Because you're, you're concerned about death or permanent damage. One of the biggest stories in the past 30 years in boxing was Gerald McClellan versus who? Nigel Benn. McClellan was one of the United States up and coming superstars. I mean, the guy was a, a shooting star, had all the future and talent in the world, and his career got cut off early that night. And I'm not saying Nigel Ben was loaded, but what I'm saying is that Ben family name should be a little bit more respectful to the process. 
If you're denying it, fine. But be more respectful to the process because of your historic history attached to your name. Be more respectful, dog. Don't come in trying to sneak in on a card across the pond because you can't get a fight over in your on your side of town. So I get hot when I talk about PEDs in boxing. I don't give a damn who it is. Like I said, we came on here and talked about Alicia Baumgartner just a few weeks ago. As much as we love her, when it was Canelo, as much as I respect him. When it comes to PEDs in boxing, I take it serious. But then I take it extra serious when your dad's most infamous fight was turning Gerald McClellan into a vegetable. And now you're sitting here playing these magic tricks, hoping that we don't notice, hoping that we don't talk about it because you're tired of talking about it. No, we still need answers, dog. You can't just go in there and say, hey, look at my last name. I deserve a fight. I know Eddie Hearn. I'm going to the United States and get the fight. That is lousy to me. That's pathetic. It's a bad sign. And Eddie Hearn, dog, it, it's disgusting. So, I, I could be wrong, but yeah. I think his daddy popped dirty before, too. I could be wrong. If Lukey, if you know that or not, I could be wrong, but uh, I'm just saying, I'm not saying this is factual. I think Nigel Ben popped dirty before as well. Yeah. I, 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 I think so. Sure. I'm not 100% sure, though. Yeah, for sure, dog. So so that's what I wanted to close up. Uh, D. Young, we appreciate you tuning in, brother. Salute, D. Fella. Young, what's up, D. Young? Uh, let, just a couple more comments from Lukey. What I hate is the fact that he ruined a big payday for many young fighters by messing uh, the money for Eubank during your fight. Agreed. Never once apologized or took any blame. Instead, he blamed everyone but himself, including the chickens and their eggs. And, uh, and yeah, dog, so... Uh, Nigel been fainted after McClellan fight to avoid. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Nigel been fainted after the McClellan fight to avoid a drug test. Mm. That's news to me, dog. I love Gerald McClellan and I watched that fight a million times, but I didn't know that one piece. So, again, dog, when you have that last name, like, now I'm not even gonna make that analogy. If you have that last name, be extra careful what goes in your body, and then if you pop. Be extra sensitive how you address it. You know, that's just normal human tendency, dog. If your dad's a if your dad was a serial killer and then you get you get charged for for a murder or a, some sort of homicide and you didn't do it, still, it looks suspe suspicious. You know what I mean? So that's my thoughts on it, Corey. You got any finishing touches, dog? I don't know, man. I, I'm just kind of really disgusted with Eddie Hearn right now, man. I'm disgusted uh, with the, the Ben fella. Uh, you know, you announced this on Wednesday. Uh, no questions in the media about the drug test. Uh, like you stated, oh, you're tired of talking about it. You're tired of talking about it. Do you know what sport you're in? Like, it's like, dude, we're looking at you. You were willing to go all the way up to a catch weight at a bigger weight just to fight Chris Eubank. What 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 in you made you feel like that? That you could just go up weight classes like that and you'll be able to beat the bigger, stronger guy. Like JJ, this all play into it. It's just his arrogance, JJ. The arrogance, dog. Lack of empathy, the lack of no humility. Yeah. Whatsoever. And that is why I think yeah, there's been a, a shit tons of boxers in every sport. In the NFL, you get a four-game suspension, you come back. All right, we see it all the time, but everybody's a little extra mad about this because Conor Ben's attitude and then the way Eddie Hearn just slipped him on in. Like, he didn't think we were going to have a problem with it. This is our sport. All of us, I don't give a shit who you're a fan of, got to take care of our sport because in 10 years, I, I still want to be talking about this. I want to tell you all I was right about Shakur. In 20 years, I want to be talking about this. And if people keep dying in the ring, we ain't going to have boxing to talk about. So I don't give a shit if it's Alicia's cute ass. I don't care if it's Connor Ben. I don't care who it is. We got to keep our, our game tight. And if it, and that includes keeping your favorite fighter accountable, then it's for the big picture. And that's my two cents on PEDs and boxing. There's no room for it, guys. Everybody makes mistakes. I get it. But have some humility. Apologize. And then, you know, let's start rebuilding. So, with that, Kareem, 
with that, bro, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Shout out to our sponsors, KO Therapeutics, Elite Sportswear. Shout out to the to the chat, man. We really appreciate you guys. Salute, Seth. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Yeah. Y'all be sure to follow all our platforms. We're all over social media, even on TikTok. Uh, we got a really cool <laughs> little cat video. Y'all go check it out. <laughs> uh, y'all, y'all keep following us. Please tell your friends about us. Guys, we appreciate all of y'all. Until next time, IOTBA, we out. Salute. This is JJ Solomon. This is Ray Bradshaw, Mr. IOTBA. Mr. New Boys can touch me on my worst day. Big Bucket Podcast.